All right, in this video, we're going to get set up with the DigitalOcean Kubernetes service. They're going to host Kubernetes for us, and we don't have to do any of that crazy setup and maintenance of all the applications and services that actually make up Kubernetes. So we just want to use Kubernetes, and the way we do that is, well, if you don't have a DO account yet, then create one. I have a referral link in the description of this video where you'll get some credit, and I'll get some credit. So. Once you're logged in, click on Kubernetes. Uh, I've already clicked on Kubernetes, but here we are. Uh, we're going to uh, do a few things. The first is create a Kubernetes cluster. I've got the instructions here. If you haven't cloned the repository of instructions and files and everything else that goes along with this course, I recommend you do that now. The link is in the description. And this is uh, kind of the second practical video. So it's DigitalOcean setup.markdown. I'm gonna preview this real quick. So this will just render the markdown. And the first thing we wanna do is git clone the DigitalOcean CCM. That is an integration that cloud providers can have with Kubernetes. They sort of write their own plugin for Kubernetes that makes things like uh, storage kind of automatically work uh, with that cloud provider's services. This will, uh, we'll use this to integrate with storage and uh, cloud load balancers on DigitalOcean. So we're gonna clone the DO CCM. And the way we do that is by going, I'm, I just have all this stuff in a, an open source directory. You can do it wherever. Uh, git clone, oh, and I'll say, oh, interesting, we already have, oh, we've already done this. Okay, you would run that command and hooray, you've got the DO CCM. Once you have that, you're gonna create a, a DO cluster in your dashboard. Click create a cluster, choose the latest version. I'm using 113.1. Uh, just pick a data center that's close to you. You can leave the, the three node cluster that you kind of get started with. Um, that's more than fine for everything we're gonna do in this course. I'll show you some high availability stuff. So you definitely need more than one node. Uh, two might even be okay. Um, and then we're gonna call this TL test cluster. Uh, and that's the one I'm gonna be using through the course. So if you wanna follow along, then call it that. So this will take a few minutes to set up. We're provisioning the nodes where you know, all the stuff is being installed. And while this is happening, you're gonna scroll down. Um, there are some instructions on installing kubectuttle, uh, which you should already have at this point. Uh, if not, see the previous video. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll see this download config file button. Just download that config file, just save file. And I'm gonna assume that you have this in your downloads directory and that you named your cluster the same as me. So we're gonna move this, you know, you'll have to change the name if you named your cluster something other than TL test cluster. We're gonna move it into kube, which is the config directory for kubectuttle config. And it looks like kube doesn't exist. So just do a make dear kube. And try it again. So now you've got a Kubernetes config file at this location, dot kube config, with all of your cluster information, specifically the cluster key. Obviously this is not safe to share because that will actually let you log into your cluster. Now that we've done that, we can use kubectuttle and ask for a version. This will give us a client and a server version. And you can actually see our cluster is already responding on DigitalOcean. This is our client version, so our local software here. This is our server version. So if the Kubernetes cluster isn't ready yet, like if you do this right after you start configuring it and download the config file, you'll get an error here because it just can't talk to the server yet and ask it like, hey, which major and minor version are you at? So once you see that, that is a good sign. The next one is kubectuttle get nodes. But this will uh, let you see if the nodes that were provisioned, you remember we provisioned a three node cluster. You can see that they're actually provisioned and responding and have a status of ready. So we can actually start getting Kubernetes to schedule some work on them. Next, we're gonna cut a new API token to use uh, just for this project. You can just paste that into your uh, browser URL bar, and you can see I've got I've got a bunch of different ones uh, here. It's a personal access token. You're only gonna be able to read this once. 
I'm gonna let you read mine because I'm gonna delete it before this video is published. YouTube tutorial. You might name this after the machine that you plan on using it. I believe this will need read and write. This is shown only once. So copy the token now. And in this DigitalOcean Cloud Controller Manager directory, we're going to copy the secret template to an actual secret. And then we're gonna edit releases secret, which is what we just created. It's the copy of this template file. And you can just delete and insert your token here. I'm gonna write and quit. And again, from this DO Cloud Controller Manager or CCM repo that I've downloaded, now I can actually run some stuff. So that file, that secret YAML file, which I will cat here. Again, this is not a token that's gonna stay around longer than it takes to make this video, so I can show that here. Please never show this to anyone else. Copy it in plain text in an email or do anything else silly. This is a private key, essentially. What this does, and we'll talk a lot about this later, is it defines a Kubernetes object of the kind secret. So we're creating a new secret that's gonna be stored in Kubernetes here. And the way that we actually apply that and tell our cluster about it is with this kubectl apply from a file-f releases secret YAML. If we now type kube cuddle get secrets, our cluster will respond uh, from DigitalOcean and say, oh yeah, I have one secret that you've given me and it's this service account token. Cool. Now we're gonna actually apply a release of the DigitalOcean CCM. And the way we do that is by simply copying this command, uh, as long as we're still in the CCM directory here. And we're gonna apply this release. Right now we're just getting some stuff set up uh, and then I'll be able to explain things. So you can see that four kind of Kubernetes objects have been created with this cluster. A role binding, a role, this is just for, actually this goes with the service account. Um, so this is like authorization, authentication stuff, uses our secret. And then we have a Kubernetes deployment here, which actually runs this DigitalOcean specific Kubernetes plugin, which makes Kubernetes and DigitalOcean play together very nicely. So now when we, um, for example, when we talk to Kubernetes and we say we like have a file that defines, let's say a WordPress deployment or something like we have in our projects directory. Well now when we wanna apply these config files, they're called manifests in Kubernetes, when we do that, for example, this annotation is basically a tag that will get interpreted as, oh, you want a DigitalOcean load balancer here. This is gonna be a DigitalOcean specific integration that spawns a DigitalOcean load balancer for us with these load balancer settings. Does that make sense? So the DigitalOcean CCM is this open source project that is basically a plugin for Kubernetes and you provision a Kubernetes cluster and then install this thing manually and it gives you all of this stuff for free after that. Uh, you do have to do this for every Kubernetes cluster that you provision. I know this video is a little complicated, but this got us kind of where we need to be to start. And now you're set up to use a fully DO integrated Kubernetes cluster. Cool, so I'll see you over there, peace.